and we're live. How's it going, Joe? Good. How are you? Very good. Episode three of This Week in the Grotto, and today we are going to talk about the will to change. But before we get to that, we need to pick the winner of this week's You Evolve Buffalo Keychain. Uh, we pick a review off of our You Evolve Buffalo Facebook page each week, and uh, we are going to either have a key for the keychain for them to pick up at the grotto, or we'll mail it out to them. And we actually have two winners this week. It's going to be Jen and Dave Mann because they share a Facebook page. <laughs> so we, uh, I'm not sure who, which, if it was Jen or Dave that wrote the review. So we're just going to uh, send two of them out to them. So the review says, only been a week so far, but trainers have been great and not afraid to answer all our questions. We both like the extra info on Facebook and YouTube. Every little bit helps when trying to get a healthier life in order. <laughs> Workout and classes are challenging and fun. Looking forward to seeing what these eight weeks bring. They, uh, they, they mentioned the eight weeks because they joined our You Evolve Buffalo Lean Program, Lifestyle, Exercise, and Nutrition, which is an eight-week program. And that being said, they have been regulars attending classes quite regularly all week and doing a fine job, might I add. So thanks for the great review, Jen and Dave. I'm glad you're enjoying the content that we're putting out. Um, this year, Joe and I did make a almost New Year's resolution to really get on the content, something that we've been wanting to do for a long time, but um, time. You know, it's what it comes down to. So we, uh, we are making the time to do that. Matter of fact, I ran into a friend of mine, Peggy Priswell, that I used to work for. She owned the gym that I worked for. I ran into her at the gym today. And she too also mentioned she's, the content that uh, uh, we're putting out and that herself and people she knows have been following it. And she looked fantastic. She was getting ready to run the half marathon. She's doing some, some training. She's been attending, I believe, and working with uh, Angel of Move, yes. Buff Move Buffalo. Is that the name Move of her? Bu yeah, Move Buffalo. Yeah, Angel's uh, got that going. She's doing some yoga classes that I know she's teaching. And I know mm -hmm. she's doing some, um, some training with that. And I actually ran into the two of them at... Um, at a, a 5k the monster scramble that we did for the month of october the you give buffalo um we ran into them and she yeah she looks fantastic yep she looked great she said she has a couple 10ks under her belt um and she i said oh you, you know you look fantastic you know what have you been doing you know she's like the boring four which was one of the, the memes i put out so i thought that, that was that's funny cool. Yeah. Um, real quick before we before we move on, I know I know I just want to make sure that I touch on um, Jen and Dave Mann because they they're in my uh, Wednesday evening group and they have been absolutely fantastic. Um, you know, I was talking to Jen and she's been just kind of keeping food logs and um, making sure that she's sent them to me. They're not only showing up to the studio, they're actually making sure that they're showing up and doing the work at home. Um, and I definitely give them some huge props because it's they've they're off to a good start, and I'm really excited for the both of them. Absolutely. Um, so just a couple of quick announcements before we get into the topic of the day. Um, if you're watching this, then you know that we have a YouTube channel. So don't forget to subscribe to the You Evolve Buffalo YouTube channel. Uh, if you find anything in this video helpful, give us a link, drop us a comment. We have, as we already mentioned, the You Evolve Buffalo Facebook page. We are also on Instagram and Twitter. And we also have a page on Facebook called You Give Buffalo, in which Jill and some fantastic members of the Grotto um, do charitable work within the community on, on a month-to-month -month basis. So Jill, why don't you let them know what's coming up with you guys? Sure. So for the month of January, we are um, focusing on the Family Justice Center in Buffalo. We are collecting items currently, um, actually starting tomorrow from the 19th to the 31st. 
Um, that can be like toiletries, deodorant, shampoo, conditioner, um, different things like that um, that we're going to be donating. And then I am also going to be running a donation-based boot camp on Friday, the 31st um, of January. And um, people can actually head, right, head over to MindBody and register right on our um, MindBody site. And all of the um, the money that we collect for that is going to be donated uh, and go towards the Family Justice Center as well. So that, yeah, that's that. And um, actually, looking forward um, into February, we did this last year, but we did a um, a Valentine's like a little Valentine's making party at the Grotto, and we're going to be doing that again. Uh, we donated it last year to a nursing home, um, and that is the plan again for this year. And then um, we also actually just started discussing this and it's in the works and in the um, process of kind of ironing out the details, but um, I believe it's gonna be every Friday for the month of February. Um, I'm gonna be running donation-based boot camps where all of the proceeds go to um, the Luca Kalani Foundation um, that was just created. Um, so we kind of wanted to do our part. We have several um, clients and friends who uh, who knew him, and we wanted to kind of show our support um, and kind of help keep his spirit alive and do what we could. Good work, good work, guys and gals. All, all good stuff. Yeah. Um, so, in oh, la uh, last announcement: you may see a a new face. Uh, around the grotto, uh, Ellie Hartman from Emerald Fitness is going to be joining our team. Uh, she will be on um, doing classes on our February schedule, which will be out uh, by next week. I'm shooting for Monday to have that schedule up on the Mind Body app. But in the meantime, throughout the rest of January, um, you may see her in uh, either mine or Jill's classes, giving us a hand. Um, getting to know some people. She uh, will also be taking on clients for training when she gets into the groove of things. And I think she's going to be a, a, a great addition in, in addition to Maureen and Vanessa and Meg and, and ourselves. I think really putting a, a nice team of workers together. Great people, great personalities, hard workers. Uh, couldn't be happier with the, the team that's coming together in 2020. For sure. Um, so yeah, keep your eyes open for that. Now, this the, the topic that we're gonna cover today, the will to change, is something that can absolutely be applied to both health, fitness, um, weight loss, training in general, but I, I think that through discussion, you'll, you'll find, this discussion, you'll find that this really applies to a wide variety of aspects in life. It's not just about health and fitness, but th that's what we do. So we are going to talk about it in the context of, of that. And what really has had this topic weighing on my mind as of late is a couple things, some pros and cons. One is working with some really, really fantastic people that are just absolutely killing it, making progress, change, um, both, again, with weight loss, with str uh, strength, um, improving their health. We have some people getting ready for competitions. Um, really, really great stuff. And there's always gonna be a certain um, population that's gonna be struggling. It happens, and a lot of times, the same people that we're talking about, they'll, they'll be the ones struggling and there'll be other times that the ones that are struggling now will be thriving. There's a lot of ebb and just like in anything in life, there's going to be a lot of ebb and flow. It's never, you know, I don't care if it's, you know, financially, you're not always going to be on the upswing and hopefully you're always not on the downswing. There's going to be some, you know, back and forth, uh, could be with your health, you're not feeling so great and other days you're going to feel like you can run through walls. <laughs> so um, the dichotomy between the, the, the two aspects of, you know, some people doing so well and then some people um, that kind of are, are struggling a bit made me think 
okay, why, you know, what can I do? What's my role? How can I help? So in thinking about how the people that are succeeding, what our role, your role, my role, the instructor's roles are, what are we missing that we're not reaching, you know, we're not batting a thousand, hitting everyone. What can we do to improve? And, and it, is it something that we're missing? Is it on us? Or is it on them? Is there a combination of, of things? And the, so the first thing I had to think about was the, to define um, the role of the trainer, Jill and, and myself. And in its simplest form, I'll tell you what I think it is and then I'll, I'll bounce it back to you, Jill, if you think differently. But I think the role of the trainer is to make people better. S straight, straight and simple. Obviously, it would get more specific based on what their goal is. But people come to us because they want to get better at something. Do you think that that is an uh, easy uh, summary? I know, very I think, simple. I think maybe not for us to make them better, but to give them the tools sure. and, and um, the tools and our knowledge that we know so they can and help them to get themselves better. Okay, much better. I, I agree. I just, I oversimplified a little there, but I, I do agree. Yeah. Now, even, <clears throat> so even the instructors that are, that are uh, working in the grotto, this applies to them. This applies to us when we are playing instructors, when we are teaching classes and not necessarily one of our programs or doing our personal training. And you come to one of the classes that you register for through the Mind Body app. We are still trainers. Um, we still need to be what, and I think this is what separates us from a lot of other instructors and trainers is I know we try to give explanations. We really try to explain why you're doing what you're doing, whether it's just a pure safety issue, mm -hmm. um, if it's through using correct form. Um, we wanna make sure that you're getting the most out of what you came there for. So we're constantly correcting things. The design of the classes are with purpose. Um, you generally are coming to us for resistance training, although we do offer other things. Um, but you're gen you're not <clears throat> you're you know what you're you're getting into, you know, <laughs> when 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 you come here. Um, the classes have purpose, and they have an expectation of an outcome, which I think is very important. That you, no matter where you go, what you do. If you go somewhere to train, if you go somewhere to take a class, you should have an ex expectation of that class and the outcome of what you're getting from it. And I think a lot of times people can confuse, they have an expectation and it may, it may be, I'm not saying that somebody's at fault, but they just might have a, um, a confused expectation. People must know uh, the difference between cardiovascular training, resistance training, and you have to curb your expectations of what you are looking to get out of that based on what your, what your goal is. So these classes and programs and training are designed with different intentions. That's, that's probably the simplest way I can you know, summarize that. Now, I was just working with a young kid, young boy, this week, and I had him warming up on the rowing machine, just as a warm up before, before we got into things. And we're just three, three minute warm up, nice and easy. He had a lot of uh, sports activities coming up. He had a lot of sports activities leading up to our training session. I was informed by his parents, you know, hey, he's got X, Y, and Z. So I knew I couldn't, I wasn't gonna burn the, burn the kid out. So I had a plan in place and I was, just getting warmed up and two and a half minutes in to the three minute rowing, he stopped and he quit. Flat out quit on me. Can't really? Swear to God. Can't do this. I'm tired. I quit. 
my my I, I was caught off guard. I was I wasn't yeah. I wasn't expecting it. So I, you know, I, I never had somebody do that to me like that, like right right off the get go. And it was just I, I was caught off guard. I don't get caught yeah. off guard too often. So I said, listen, you better start rowing because now instead of 30 seconds left, you have 40 seconds left. And he made a couple pulls, he stopped again. I said, now you have 50 seconds left. I'm gonna keep adding 10 seconds until we get this done. Because if there's one thing we don't do in here is we don't quit. So you better get moving. So now the net, now I gotta think, because he's a kid and I'm not sure, I, I have a, a better idea of how adults are gonna react than kids, just because of experience. So I'm thinking on my feet here, I said, if he quits again, I'm throwing him out. I'm gonna tell him, get out, your dad's in the parking lot, you gotta leave. And I know- Oh, and he, his dad wouldn't have been having that either. No, no, no. I mean, was, not on your end, on his end, on the On his end, end yeah, and, and he knows that. Sure. So I didn't say that, it didn't come to that, but that was, that was my only move I can think of next, is that I have to, I have to nip this in the bud He's either testing me, you know, being a kid, feeling me out, or I'm not, I'm not sure where this is coming from. So he finishes, boom, 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 does the 50 seconds. And I said, listen, there's no quitting. You can't quit. You want to be an athlete? You cannot quit. The minute you quit, you will always be a quitter. Quitters quit. Winners don't quit. You have to finish it. I'm not saying you have to like it. You got to slug through it, but you can not quit. We don't quit in here. So let's just, that's not an option. And he got, and I, and, and I think he was a little mad, <laughs> but which is, which is fine. Which that's is fine. He, you told him exactly what he needed to hear though. Exactly. And, and we got through, we got through the rest of the workout. Everything was fine by the end. It's, it was like, it never happened. So I see his father the next day. I let him know. He asked me, hey, how did things go yesterday? I told him exactly what I just told you. But I said, <clears throat> I wouldn't, in my opinion, I wouldn't bring it up with him. Don't beat him. I wouldn't beat him up over it. It was handled. If I'm, I would bet anything it's not going to happen again. And I don't want to discourage him and, and, and get him thinking like he doesn't want to come back here. You know, and he agreed 100%. He's like, thank you. You did, you did the right things and, and so forth. Um, so he, there was, there was, he needed some will. He needed some, some will to overcome whatever it was he was feeling in that moment. And not to go off on, on just another side note before we, we, we dig into that, the concept, the idea of that will. There was another lady um, who was, that does, doesn't come, come, to, come to our place but was complaining a lot about not getting the body composition results that she's looking for. And she exercises pretty regularly. I'm assuming at least three days a week, but it's all very cardio based classes with not a lot of resistance training, a lot of like coordinated classes, dancey stuff. No, um, you definitely not the, the, bodybuilding type training that, that we do. And we even try to incorporate in, in, into our classes. And it, it's, it's not gonna be possible to, so if you keep doing what you're doing, you know you wanna get a certain result, like we talked about earlier, about there should be an expectation that what you are doing, you should know what the expected outcome should be. And from what I know, from what she wants and what she's doing, the outcome is not going to happen. And it's, it's not happening for her, unfortunately, because the expectations are wrong. Um, and, and, and that could be considered either cognitive dissonance, where you're just going to continue to do the same thing, even though reality keeps dictating to you that things aren't changing. Right. Um, or it could, it could possibly be, but I don't believe it is. Uh, I think the person is too smart to know, uh, I could say maybe the person just doesn't know better. Right. But I, I would, I would go out on a limb to say that the person is deluding themselves. 
un unfortunately, which is which is also a, a, uh, a will, in my opinion, a will to change issue. Sure. Um, and as Jill already alluded to, as trainers, we can uh, inspire, uh, we can motivate, but most importantly, and, and I think this is probably what Jill and I do best is inform, is try to inform the client on what they need to do, but we cannot impose our will on you. It ultimately, the decision to take that information and run with it and incorporate it is going to come down to you executing it. So inspiration, motivation, all of that's gonna be fleeting. That comes and that goes, it doesn't last. It can be very, very high. We, we've seen it, we've done it. We get this idea, I wanna do this and I wanna lose a bunch of weight or I wanna train for this and, and the, in that moment, the inspiration motivation is very high and then it drops off as reality of life sets in. And then hopefully you can get through it with discipline. And discipline is, uh, are you willing to do the work? And if you are used to punching the clock and doing the work, you can build your discipline muscle. You know, doing what needs to be done even when you don't feel like doing it. That is discipline. But you have to be willing to do that work. And the key word is you and willing. It's your will. Not my will. Not Jill's will. Not anybody else's will. I did, I did my work. You know, I did mine. Jill did hers. We do, we, we do, in this realm, we do what we have to do. We can't will you to doing it. And some people um, are very, very willing. I know that the word's going to keep coming up over and over to do that work. And, of course, it's not, in, even in the case of Jill and, our, and, and, and myself, it's not always there 100% of the time, all the time, that's almost impossible. But when, <clears throat> if you are not willing to do that, then it's gonna be very, very hard um, to complain about it because it, you, you know what you did. It, it, it's gonna fall back on, on you. So you then must, you then need to sort out what happened that broke your will. And without that will, you will fail. The only scenario, and you can interrupt me anytime, Joe. I know I'm on a, on a roll here. But the only, right. the only time that I see individuals succeeding in not having to use will is if they are extremely skilled or have an extreme genetic advantage. So what I mean by that is somebody that is, some people are just natural athletes, right? Everything comes easy to them. They're fast runners, they can jump, they have great hand-eye coordination. It seems like they can just, um, you don't have to show them three times how to do a bench press. They do, everything just looks natural. You put a bar on their back, they can squat, and they have, They've never lifted before, but they're super strong, ridiculously strong. And everything just comes very natural and easy to them. You may even see this with music, where people just pick up music, they have a beautiful voice, they have a great ear for tone, and it doesn't take much for them to, to be what would take you training scales on the guitar for days and days and days. And you're really, really trying, but these people just almost pick it up like, like they were born with the instrument in their hand. There's also the cases of people with these genetic gifts where they can just eat whatever they want. They always look lean and muscular and their genetics uh, allow them that. And it doesn't seem fair. Nobody said it was fair, 
but that is what it is. Now, what happens then when the rubber hits the road? Because if sometimes these people, things come easy to them because they have this natural high level of skill or this natural set of genetics that allows them to not have to, I don't even want to say not have to work as hard, but their will is never tested. Then an injury happens. They get sick. Their metabolism slows down. So let's take a couple scenarios, diff different possible scenarios. Let's take a really bad scenario. We know somebody that came at, uh, four weeks back or so at the grotto had a, uh, had a, a, a terrible health, health scare. Luckily, he's, he's doing okay. He's doing really well, as a matter of fact. He's come back within a matter of weeks, sh showed his face a bunch of times. He got out there walking as soon as he possibly could get cleared. He gets clearance to do anything. He's coming back and he's, whatever, he's, he's working with Jill. Uh, this is last week he was in working with you. Yeah. That's Will. That is Will. His his body let him let him down, but his will is what is driving him to regain his health, regain his fitness. He still wants to get out there. He I know he badly wanted to do the uh, the Shamrock Run. Yeah. Probably not yeah, happen. For it. No. But he'll walk it. He's oh yeah. Gonna, sure you know, he's, gonna, he's gonna. That is Will. That is. Facing your fear and overcoming it. Now, so he was tested, but he was an example of a person that wasn't genetically gifted. He wasn't gifted with the athletic skill set. Not maybe when he was young, younger, and I didn't know him, but I know from us working with him, he basically came in like a newbie. He yeah. was a newbie, and he, everything that that uh, was afforded to him through health and fitness, he had to work for. Yeah, he earned all that. He earned it all. So his will was tested from day one. He had to earn it from day one. That That's an important uh, distinction. Now, there's other cases where, like I said, some people where they can eat whatever they want, they always look good. Age comes and they don't realize that their, their body's ability to deal with maybe it's uh, the carbohydrates they're eating because they're slowly over time becoming insulin resistant. Their hormones change through age. And all of a sudden, it's like, oh my God, out of nowhere, where I'm getting this little you know, fat around the belly, the little love handles. And, and, but they have no skill set to deal with it because they never had to. So now through time, it's getting pro progressively worse, you know, so, so to speak. Mm -hmm. Now push comes to shove. Do you have the will to figure this out, to seek the help, to educate yourself, to figure it out? Or do you just go on the slide and do what you always done because that's all you know, because you were never challenged. You never had to face the scale. You never had to face putting on a pair of jeans that didn't fit. You never had to look in the mirror and not be happy with what you saw. You never had to <clears throat> face that social anxiety. You never had to face that depression because of you know the you weren't happy with your your external look. All those things. What <clears throat> then what happens? What if you get an injury? Say I had an injury. I, t I tore my bicep deadlifting. As soon as within days, days, within three, four days after surgery, the doctor said, the surgeon said, yes, you can move your arm lift. I was just telling somebody not too long ago, I had a hundred pound dumbbell in one hand and a five pound in my broken hand. And it never missed a workout because I had the will because I wanted to get that arm better. It was a matter of will. I never had physical skills and attributes that came naturally. Everything had to be earned. Um, 
and no, nobody can do it for you. There's not a single person that can do any of those things for you. And oftentimes when that push comes to shove, it's, I, I, in my opinion, I think it's fear that holds the person back. Some sort of fear. Absolutely. Of, of, of something. Mm -hmm. um, I think a lot of it, honestly, is I think that, um, I think that my number one and first thought, because I've had people say it at some point, that they are afraid that they're going to fail. Yes. And, you know, and my response to that always is, is, you know, you can't fail if you don't even try, but you might, you won't succeed if you don't try either. And you're not going to know the answer to that unless you start making some moves here, you know, and you have the opportunity to be successful. And not only that, but something I've always said, and just the kind of mindset and mentality um, that I, I personally have myself, and I try to kind of express, you know, even with the girls and my clients is that I don't feel like I lose. I feel like, you know, every, every quote unquote failure that you have, that's just another opportunity. That's another experience that you have. It's another route and avenue that you maybe took. And even if it didn't work, well, now, you know, well, next time we're not going to do it that way. Next time we go about this, whatever it is, we're going a different direction and we're going to find out a different way to make it work. If that direction doesn't work, we're going another way. But if you really get something in your head and get the fear of the failure out of your head and you figure out why you're committed to whatever it is, put, I mean, no ifs, ands, or buts. Make your, find your way. And, you know, fear is the first thing I think that gets in people's, that's like one of the biggest obstacles. I, I, I heard this term just recently. I never heard it used in this way before. Um, called silent agreements, and it's it. It's uh, I think it comes from the boxing world. It's when two guy two guys are fighting, and then they wrap up each other. Everybody's seen this. And the guy, you know, they look like they're getting tired, and, and they they look like they're they're hugging in the in the ring. They're saying, "Why why did we get ourselves into this?" <laughs> well, it's 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 basically one guy saying, "I'm not going to hit you real hard." you're not going to hit me real hard. Right. Yeah. Well, they, um, they throw what are called don't hit me punches. Boom, boom, boom. Well, they're, they're throwing punches, but the other guy knows that those punches aren't intended to hurt. So that's his silent agreement. I'm not going to hurt you. You don't hurt me. Let's get through this round. Let's get through this match. We're both hmm. getting paid at the end of the day. Let the scoring, let's just get out of here. You see it in football where linemen throw, you know, <clears throat> don't hurt me blocks, whether they look like they're just waltzing, they're dancing at the line. I'm not going to come in. I'm not going to crash you. You don't crash me. There's all these, <clears throat> there's these different, what they call silent agreements. And I think people make these silent agreements with themselves. They make deals with themselves that they tell themselves they don't have to articulate it to me as their trainer. They don't articulate it to their husband, their wives, their kids, whoever. They make deals with themselves. And I think it goes back to what you just said before this, is that they don't want to fail. They don't want to do something because of fear of failure. They don't do certain things because they don't want to be hurt. They don't want to be physically hurt. They don't want to be emotionally hurt. Um, they don't want to be embarrassed is a big Absolutely. one for sure embarrassment which is is can also play into that failure mm -hmm. and they don't want to be exposed they don't want to be found out on the inside of what they are either capable or incapable of so they make these deals with themselves to protect themselves from taking that next step of trying to impose their will to overcome these obstacles, whatever those things may be. And it, like I said, it could be social fear, um, 
it, it could be a whole host of things. Only they would know. Um, and basically, that just kind of keeps them, what, in a state of, like, benevolence? I don't know if benevolence is the right term, but I oh. would say it keeps them in a holding pattern at best, and at worst, they become, they move further away from where their their goal is. Yeah. And as that happens, whatever it is that they're fearing, their embarrassment of failure becomes worse and worse and worse. And, sure. and it, it leads to um, a, uh, a compromised mental state as well as, as well as physical state. So the question then becomes, are you taking steps forward uh, towards your health and fitness goals that toward where you want to be? Or are you going back to the example of the lady that I mentioned who just keeps doing, you yeah, know, stuff take, in stagnicity. Yeah. Taking those classes, even though she knows that those aren't going to, I shouldn't say she knows cause I don't know that for fact, but, but they even, aren't going to be effective. Right. Not taking the, the effective measures to get to where you want. Um, and these would be the, the, the don't hit me punches that you're, you're throwing to yourself, which is, mm -hmm. which is cognitive dissonance. Um, sure. So what, hmm. what you could, when, when looking for help, right? I think there's two different, there's two different styles of trainers or instructors. There's, there's doers and then there's talkers. Okay. And I know, I know some great, um, doers, right? I'll give you an example. My friend Joe Rich is a, is a doer. For sure. He does. He loves natural bodybuilding. He competes in bodybuilding. He, he lives it, eats it, breathes it, sleeps it. You want to be inspired? Follow him on Instagram. Follow him on Facebook. He's a doer. He's somebody that's always, and you can, you, he can inspire you to, to, to do. Is he a talker? I wouldn't say he's a talker. I don't know. I, I, I love talking to him, and he inspires me when I talk to him. But I don't, and I know he does, um, he does some coaching and online coaching and helps people, but I wouldn't categorize him as a talker. I would categorize myself as a talker and him more of a doer. Although I think that I, I, and, and you as well, Joe, we thread the line of talking and doing, but he would be a great example of a doer. Now talkers, there's good talkers and there's bad talkers. There's people that talk, 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 and they might not even know what they're talking about or they're steering you in the wrong, wrong direction. Yeah. Knowingly or unknowingly. And yeah. The both, knowingly is shameful. That's, that's both shame. the, yeah. Yeah. Ab absolutely. Um, but I, I think we, we try to do our, the best at both at trying to, help people think their way through, mm -hmm. give them the skills. So the, the one thing you don't want to do is when somebody has an issue, you want to make sure they're informed about what they're going to face as it happens. To let them know, you want to lose weight, the scale doesn't always go down. There's going to be ebb and flow. There's going right. to be these factors that are going to, you know, as, as an example, again, I'm going to use, uh, Kristen, as an example of who I'm uh, training for a physique competition. And the things we talk about, this is what you need to expect. This is how you're going to feel. This is going to be normal. What you're doing, you're embarking on something very unique that 99.99% .99 of the people are never going to do, never going to experience. You're going to be emotional. You're going to feel angry at times. You're not going to feel like you like the people that you, your family that you really love. These are going to be some of the the mind mind games that are, are going to you're going to be feeling. Right. Um, you're going to be tired. You're going to be cranky. Believe me, it's You'll wake you. Up, it's wake not up in the middle of the night. <laughs> you know all all those all those things. Yeah. Is what you need to know at this point, when you're ten weeks out, you're going to feel like this. When you're six weeks out, you're going to feel like this. 
two weeks before the show, you're going to feel like this. On the day of the show, you're going to feel like this. But more importantly, the next day, the show is yeah. on Saturday. This is how you're going to feel on Sunday. I can right. guarantee it. And then the following Sunday, you're going to feel like this. And then six weeks later, it's going to be like this. They need this to is be, all playing in my head and knowing, right? knowing it's it all, personally. It's almost like, you know, I, I, I know exactly what you're talking about because as you're going, even week by week, 10 weeks out, I remember even starting posing. I remember, you know, the two weeks out. I remember peak week. I remember show day. I remember, oh my Lord, the next day after the show was over when I thought that I needed to eat every single thing that I hadn't eaten, which was not smart. Just <laughs> Any competitor that's out there, don't do it. If you can help it, don't do it to yourself. But, right, but those are you, your you remember all of it. You remember those are your experiences. And, and you Absolutely. can take those experiences. And if you know how to formulate and package them, then you know how to coach them. Mm -hmm. And it's through, you know it because you've coached it. You know it right. because you went through it. You've done it right. yourself. And these are the things that become, in my opinion, most important is that our job is to inform. Not, it's not the inspiration, it's not the motivation. It's you need to build the discipline. You need to take our information. And that's why she's having a phenomenal prep. I just, we, we talked this morning. Yeah, she, she raised, looks great. Everything's right on point. Perfectly mm -hmm. right where we need to be. We haven't had a hiccup yet. You know, knock on wood. She's such a hard worker too. I'm not even surprised. I'm I'm not either. And I'm yeah. really not. And I and I told her, I said, it's your it's your discipline. So I appreciate your discipline and your um I can't remember how I worded it, but but you listening. I appreciate you listening. Just mm -hmm. doing you know what I asked. Compliance. Yeah, compliance. Yeah, I think say I think that was the word I used, compliance. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Your compliance and hard work is making this go. I have no illusions and nobody else should have any illusions that it's her will that is getting her there. For she, sure. Her will. I can't will her there. She's the one, right? She's the one that has to not mm -hmm. eat that brownie, right? She's right. the one that has to get up at 5 a.m. and do her workouts. She's the one that has to go and practice the posing in five inch heels. She, it has nothing to do with me. And thank God that's her and not you for that one, for sure. I, I'm graceful. <laughs> I, I, have, I have my heels still, we'll try it out. So, <laughs> 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 so, so taking it out of the aspect of uh, trainers and instructors and in fitness, Mm -hmm. Wouldn't you expect the same if you went to a dentist, right? You wouldn't, you would expect, you would have a certain expectation and an expectation of outcome from the dentist that you went to, the mm -hmm. doctor that you went to, the mechanic that you went to to fix your car, right? If you go there, if I went to a, me a mechanic and his car was a bigger hoopty than mine, I might have questions, right? Why? <laughs> why can't you fix your own car and you're I'm paying you to fix mine right why is there a coat hanger hanging you know holding up your your your, your, your windows are duct taped it wouldn't make sense right right if if your dentist had busted up teeth it wouldn't make sense um if your if your doctor was smoking and unhealthy and um didn't fit the bill so to speak I would have questions I would have, and right down the line, you know, and, and, and mm -hmm. granted, it might be they have their own fears and whatever that they have to deal with. But if I'm looking for a specific, I'm paying for a specific service, I, I have an expectation. And I'm, I have to make those judgments. Right. Make certain judgments that I'm going to get what I, what I expect. And that's go going to play in play into it mm -hmm. um, also i would say you have to be aware of sociopaths especially in in in, in all industries but it may be just because you know we're knuckle deep in this one i think that it tends to attract a certain breed of sociopath um 
And that's basically somebody that doesn't have a social conscience and that is looking to move themselves forward themselves over anybody at the cost of, of anyone else. And yeah. unfortunately that's pretty, pretty prevalent too. And I would just, um, I would be very conscious of, of that because the problem with sociopaths is that they're good at it. They're good at it. And that's the problem with it. The expectations then aren't about your outcome. It's sure. only how your outcome can help them. Yeah. Other than that, other than that, you're disposable. Exactly. And it could come at the cost of your, your health, your fitness, mm -hmm. your physical and mental well-being in the end. Sure. If, if I don't, if I don't do my job, if I don't inform, say, Kristen on what's lying ahead and she can't trust me, if, if, if it's not working and my plan is falling apart at the seams, I failed. i have assuming that the compliance is being held on her end. It's my- That's the part, but yeah. Yeah, it, it has, obviously it has to work both ways. Right. I've always said a pint of blood for a pint of blood. You can't, you can't ask for a gallon of mine for a pint of yours and I can't ask for a gallon of yours for a, a pint of mine. It has right. to be- It An has to be- A relationship. Even. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Now, when it comes to the idea of fear, especially when it comes to the idea of fear of holding you back from making those changes, I would say fear is in your imagination, and, and then there's danger, and danger is real. There's a difference. Sure. Absolutely. Fear can be, um, fear is emotional where I think danger is physical, but both can be equally damaging to a person, both physically and, and emotional to their yeah. psyche. Absolutely. So not, not to have, um, not to dismiss e either one of them. So what does it take to overcome fear? Well, obviously we said that you have to have a will, but it takes courage you need courage to overcome fear there's no other word that i can think of that would describe that a person if you know somebody that you think has courage that means they have fear because courage i, I cannot exist without fear if there was no fear if there was nothing that they had to overcome, then what's there to be courageous about? You need you need you need a, a moments of weak of weakness. You need sure. vulner, vulnerability. If there's no weakness. If there's no vulnerability. If there's no fear, then there's no need to have any courage. There's nothing to overcome. So how could you be a courageous person if you didn't have fear and weakness? So it's not it's not to be looked at fear and weakness. Everybody has it. It's how you handle it. But no person go and the people that you might look up to for being courageous, just remember that they are only at that point because they had the fear. They were confronted with fear and weakness. So don't, just because you, you have it, don't think that you can't also be the hero in your, in your own story. And For sure. That. Um, that's where the rubber hits the road. You know, that's where, you know, when I use the example of, of uh, Tom with say his, his health issue, that was, I guarantee he had, he faced fear. Oh, for sure. Massive fear. Mm -hmm. Fear that I could never imagine that I, I fortunately have not had to experience yet in my life but he had no choice when when the devil comes knocking at your door you can't not answer if you don't answer he's just going to come back tomorrow and knock again you, right you have to answer that door 
And that is what makes a person courageous or not. That's what makes a person a true fighter or not. That's your fight or flight. So <clears throat> don't think of it. Think of it as an opportunity. I'll give you an, I'll give you an example of one of my fears. I always hated, I hated doing, you know, I've run my own business forever now. I hated doing the, the book work for the taxes. To me, it was the most daunting task ever. And I would always save it for the last minute. I mean, last, last minute. I was the guy that always on April 15th is turn, turning my stuff in. Terrible. And it, it would put so much pressure on me because I'd have to do a year's worth of work in a very short period of time. And it was stay up all night, get up in the morning. It was always this big to do at the end of every year. And it truly wasn't until, until we got into business together that I said, I, I can't do this anymore because I, I'm now, because that was my role in this business, I take care of that end, that I can't let you down. I can't, you know, you need your paper. Everybody needs their paperwork done. I have to, I can't, I can't do it that way anymore. So I got into a system with the account where it's done every month. And then this way, it's nice and easy. It was the greatest thing I ever did. It makes it so much easier. That one day a month I have to go and take care of that is awful because I still hate it. But it's so much, it's like eating, you know, swallowing just this tiny little pill instead of like this, this giant horse pill at the end of the year. You just put that, and then it becomes a discipline. It becomes part of the routine. And once you face it, it's accepted. Everything becomes much easier and more acceptable. That's just one little thing of fear. And if anybody says, so if anybody thinks that they don't have fear, that just means you don't have courage because you've never had to exercise courage to overcome that fear. And if you say you don't have fear, next time you cross the street, don't look both ways. Keep your head down in your phone and just walk across the street. Why do you look both ways when you cross the street? Because you're afraid you're going to get hit by a car, right? You're not an idiot. That's fear. Right. Everybody has it. You're, why, that's why your head's on a swivel. That's why you, 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 you pay attention to what you're doing. You, you know how vulnerable you are. You're just this hunk of slab of meat that can get creamed by a car. Right? That's why you put your seatbelt on. That's why you, when you ride a motorcycle, you put a helmet on. You know, besides it being the law, everybody has some form of fear. That's why you chew your food and you don't just swallow it so you don't choke. There's no getting around it. So if anybody says they don't have fear, they're a liar, or they're just not thinking, well, they need to get some help. <laughs> no. I shouldn't say that. But it's there and it's natural and you need it. It's fear is a natural part of life. It's, it's put there to project you forward. It's there to keep you moving forward. Don't dismiss it. Don't look at it as a liability. You have to try to embrace it to overcome it and establish your will. Anything uh, Anything you need to add to that, Joe? Well, I think that, you know, when it comes to discipline, I think a lot of it goes back to some of the habit changes that we've talked about before and, um, you know, becoming committed, even if it's to something small, because the more successful you are in doing it, the more that's going to help build up like that discipline muscle that you talked about. And I think, you know, making, you build up your confidence in making those small changes. And then that's where, I mean, there's obviously going to come times. I actually, I think I put up um, on one of our Instagram the one day within the last week or so. Um, it might have been Saturday, last Saturday morning, actually, because um, I got up or I, you know, went and did my workout or whatever. And it was one of those days, you know, where it's like, man, I don't feel like doing this. 
I don't want to do it. And I, and I literally, I'm like, nobody asked you what you wanted. I'm, I'm having this conversation. I mean, almost with myself. I'm like, nobody asked you what you wanted to do. You're you here. Just silent doing. agreements. I, I was, <laughs> right. I was, but with myself, yeah. yeah, I was making them. But, and I said, I go, nobody asked you what you felt, feel like doing. Just do it. You're already here. So I did it. I got it done. Um, it wasn't, it wasn't a crap workout and it wasn't an amazing one. Um, but I got it, I got it done and over with because I told myself, this is what I'm doing. This is what I'm doing it. And I think it's more of making the commitment that I, or, you know, keeping the commitment and the promise that I made to myself. Absolutely. And that's where the, I guess the discipline comes in, but that was over. I think that's even come over a series, you know, and, um, you know, a frame of time that it was like, I know what I did in the past and I know that it didn't work and I know that it's not going to work for me and I don't want to go back there. So at this point, I know that I have to stick to these promises and commitments that I've made to myself along the way. Sure. You're going to get those. You're going to feel those moments of weakness. You're going to feel those, the, the, you're going to hear those voices telling you to go back to bed. You're going to uh, hear those voices telling you to get up and eat in the middle of the night. Done it myself. Who hasn't? Um, you're going to be in social situations where if you don't eat, you're going to feel socially awkward. Um, and if, if, if that's not, or drinking, um, everybody's out boozing. And you, maybe you need the social lube, so to speak, because you're not comfortable around a certain demographic of people. You're not, you know, it's a bunch of uh, people from work. It's a work party. It's a whatever, whatever it is. Everybody's experience. It's a wedding. It's a funeral. It could be any, any type of social situation where you're not um, socially comfortable. Um, but those are your opportunities to express your will. That's when the fight begins. Everything else isn't isn't the fight, right? Mm -hmm. All the the uh, the posting on the social media, the oh I I I I prepped my food today and did my grocery shopping and uh, I booked my classes and I, I bought the new workout clothes and all that. That's all that. That's all the sparring. That that's that's the jab and the sparring and everything. But, now but they, they shouldn't go, don't, I mean, we don't want to make that go completely unnoted too. Those are still important steps, but absolutely. the action, the no, no. action following up with that is, that's, that's the key in all of it. That's the training. That's yeah. the training. But now you're in the fight. Yep. You don't know how you're going to react until the fight starts, right? So again, us as, as trainers, as coaches, are to inform try our best to inform you of what's going to happen during the fight. Mm -hmm. We talk about this stuff all the time. You know you're going somewhere, find out what's on the menu. You have a wedding to go to, find out what's on the menu. Prepare your day leading up to that so you have room and you don't have to be so uptight and worry about what you're going to eat or if you want to have a drink, you can have it. Be prepared for it because that's where the rubber is going to hit the road. That's now you're, you're no longer sparring at your gym with your friend. Now this is your, this is the fight. This is what you prepare have hopefully been preparing for. Mm -hmm. What's going to happen? What are you going to do? Are you going to show up or are you going to drop the ball? This is your will. This is your chance. This is your chance to be, to be courageous. This is your chance to watch the football game and not, eat all the pizza and drink all the beer if you're not supposed to be. That's, that's your time to shine and you should own it because it's about you. And when you do it once, it gets easier the second time. Mm -hmm. And if, it, if you are getting flack from people and you're being ridiculed for trying to better yourself and make those changes, then it might be time to change your environment, which we talked yeah. about. So there's motivation, there's, you know, discipline over motivation, environment over discipline. Because if these, if, if the people that you surround yourself with are constantly trying to break your discipline, then it's time to break your environment. And that might need to change. No different than the lady taking the cardio classes, 
probably needs to change her environment if she wants to get the physical results that she's looking for. And that sure. might be a fear. It might be a fear to change. I'm not saying you got to change and you got to come train with us, but you got to change and you got to do something else. Or maybe yeah. even where, you're, where she's going offers something different, but she's just comfortable with what she's doing. And she likes the people that are, are, are taking that class with her. She likes the instructor. She likes, it's convenient. It's close to the house. It's cheap. It could be any number of things that's keeping the person in that loop but it's not doing you any good. Right. You need to make the change and change isn't easy. Any change, change is scary. Um, I don't know. I, I, I think I, I, I think I punched myself out talking. I, I think I, I think that's about all I got, Joe. I think you, I think you pretty much said it all. <laughs> yeah. So this is what I'm going to do. Don't laugh at me, Joe. I'm not. You're laughing. Hey. So, yes. Go ahead. No, you go ahead. No, I was just going to mention uh, the, so, the, the Facebook Live. Uh, the one that I'm going to do this week is what I'm going to do is live. I'm going to build a meal plan to show people how to easily do it using an app. We're going to take a 2,000 calorie, start with 2,000 calories. We're going to break it down into a balanced diet of macros. And then I'm going to show you how to punch foods in and out that you, you would like and how to change the proportions until you can make it fit both the calorie range and the macronutrient numbers. And then I'm going to do a second one that's going to be geared toward a low-carb diet to show you how you can make those adjustments. And I think that'll be pretty helpful for people to... Yeah, I think people will love to see that. Yeah. So, um, so when you brought up the live, I thought you were going to discuss our um, Grotto for the People live. That's uh, that one that we did? Mm hmm It was great. Yeah, I know. I think that we should do it like maybe once a month. Yeah, we, what we could do is just keep adding to that playlist. Yeah, or make new ones. But... Either way, either way um, I think there were a couple of people who said that they'd like to be better prepared for the next round. Yeah. Um, but it was, I think, I think people really enjoyed it because, right. uh, oh yeah, it was hilarious. <laughs> it was right. awesome. So it's I definitely good. think that that's something that um, we should toss into our monthly uh, live extravaganza. Yeah. Put something else on the schedule. Mm -hmm. Oh God. Just adding up the plate. Just add it in. Add it in. We'll, just, we'll get a bigger plate. It's all good. We all got right. this. <laughs> okay, everyone. Thanks for listening. Don't forget to subscribe. Hit the like button. and we'll Send see. us a review. Yeah, send us a review. And uh, next week, we'll announce the winner of the keychains, the Evolve Buffalo keychains. So thanks again, everyone. Have a great week. Bye.